What's up, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my Raw reaction for the first Raw of 2016. That's right, January 4th. And we are here to talk about what the hell happened on Monday Night Raw. So strap in, because I certainly have some opinions on the Internet. Imagine that. So they opened the show with a super long recap. Like, holy shit, it just kept going. Let's show the whole show from last week. It's so important. Um, so we had that, and then out comes Steph, and out comes Roman, and they have a promo, and it's kind of, you know, whatever, but it is obviously furthering the fact that we're going to have a world title match on Raw, which they had a bunch of those lately, which is weird, um, between Reigns and Sheamus with Vince as the ref, but Vince isn't there yet, right? So, our first match of the night, making good on their 30 seconds from last week, we have Kevin Owens versus Neville. And these dudes were taking some crazy bumps for a TV match. That was kind of, they were just, kind of, they were just going for it, which is, you know, admirable. Um, but Owens wins the match. And then out comes Dean Ambrose being all crazy Dean Ambrose and puts Owens through the table. And then like, smooshes his cheeks. Yeah, uh, not a fan of how, what? That was a weird looking punch. Not a fan of how... Ambrose is trying to up his crazy as a face, it doesn't really work for me. I, I think he was more effective being a more cerebral crazy as a heel, uh, but now he's just wacky Dean Ambrose, and it, it, it doesn't work for me. Anyway, uh, that moves us on to Stardust and Titus had a match. Now, don't get me wrong, huge fan of Stardust and Titus in their backstage skits, Huge fan of them interacting in any kind of promo capacity. Stardust vs. Titus in a match, I really don't need to see that. That's not really... And they gave him like a while here, too. Like that, that was a much longer match than I had anticipated them having on Raw. And it wasn't that good. And Titus wins. So, continuing on here, uh, we had Charlotte vs. Becky Lynch. And... Uh, Becky wins here. There was some Ric Flair interference because, of course, there was. And we apparently get some kind of a heel turn from Charlotte. Now, a couple of questions here. One, how the hell does Paige fit into all this? Because Paige is already a heel. Uh, and Paige and... Sh Paige and Charlotte weren't getting along. We haven't seen Paige since the Slammy, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Second of all... You really want Charlotte to be a heel, you need to remove Ric Flair from the equation. I don't care what he does, he's a Hall of Famer, he's a legend, people are going to pop for and cheer Ric goddamn Flair. So, you want to get Charlotte over as a serious heel, you got to remove Grandpa from the equation, because people are going, oh, Grandpa, he's fine. Like, there's, there's no two ways about it. I love Ric Flair, but come on, that's not going to work for Charlotte trying to be a heel. Uh, with, with, with Flair at ringside for her matches. So, that being said, if you really want to, like, I can see the direction, ideally. You want to have Charlotte be, you know, everything was handed to her, she was, she's a Flair, styling and profiling, and if you have heel Charlotte, and, hold on here. If you have heel Charlotte, and you bring up Bailey as like the dusty roads to her flair as like the common blue collar Bailey versus the super rich limousine riding Charlotte that could work uh, but if they aren't going in that direction I'm not really sure why you turn her heel they're apparently going to have a match on Smackdown again for the title I don't know speaking of Smackdown though apparently brought back John Cena last week to not have him on Raw this week, because apparently he's going to be on SmackDown because they're going to go to USA. That's their big Thursday thing for USA. Uh, but it's not live, so I really don't really care too much. I haven't read the spoilers yet, so I'm not sure what happened as they taped it uh, on Tuesday night. Anyway, moving on. We had Big Show versus Ryback. And thank God for the Wyatts. We didn't actually have to watch Big Show versus Ryback because they came in and attacked Ryback. They came in, went after Big Show, and they were like, Ah, we're all in the Rumble! Ah! Whatever. Anyway, the next match was Rusev and Del Rio representing the League of Nations versus the Usos. Now, first of all, where's Lana? Like, 
You can have Lana come out and do stuff with League of Nations. I don't see why you don't. Like, granted, people are going to cheer for Lana, but... Like, I don't see why you'd bring her back for this little tiny bit with Rusev, and then, oh, damn, now we're doing something else, and now she's just off TV. Like, what? what is the point of that? Anyway, Rusev and Del Rio win this match, uh, and I still don't see the point of what they're doing with League of Nations. Anyway, that brings us to this match. Heath Slater versus Dolph Ziggler. Now, strap yourselves in here, folks, because Heath Slater comes out with... Adam Rose, Curtis Axel, and Bo Dallas. Apparently, they're called the Social Outcasts, and it's basically the Job Squad 2016. Now, Heath Slater wins this match by, you know, a, a roll-up because there were some distractions, and that's kind of not the point. The point is, after the match, they cut... They, they each individually cut little promo things about how it's their time, and they're off the chain, off the chain, off the chain! Uh, or something. Here's the problem. I like most of these guys. I like Heath Slater. I, I like Bo Dallas. I think when Curtis Axel was, was doing his hold on, don't change the channel thing, Axel Mania, before, before he went full Hogan with it, when he was just doing, you know, I was never eliminated, that was working, the crowd was reacting to it. I think these guys do have something. But whatever they have, this wasn't it. It was terrible. The crowd didn't care. And I feel like a lot of guys in the back have seen what The New Day did. They saw that The New Day went to management, or went to Vince, and was like, Look, this face shit for us, not working. Give us six months of doing what we want to do, and being ourselves. And if we can't get over in that six months, you can just fire us. And clearly... The New Day has been the highlight of the show for the past six months. So, I can see how a lot of guys lower on the card saw that and go, Oh, I can do that. And perhaps these four guys managed to convince, you know, somebody that this was a good idea. And this was their shot. And it was terrible. Like, I'm sorry, it was, it, it was, it was terrible. Like, you guys had a shot. They gave you TV time. It is time to go for that brass ring and you fucked it up. So, I feel bad. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is going to last, you know, more than a week. If they can keep going with it or not. But, at a first impression, they failed it. Like, so hard. And, I'm hoping they didn't pitch Vince on the same exact thing that New Day did. Where it's, hey, if it doesn't work, you can just fire us. Because, then they're getting fired because this fucking didn't work. Anyway. Speaking of the New Day. Moved on to a New Day promo, uh, where they made fun of that Mike Tyson hoverboard thing. Uh, and they said that they had a gift for us, and they were going to count down our the, the gift. But that got co-opted by the return of Chris Jericho for some reason. And he said it wins. There you go. So we get the return of Chris Jericho coming out to hit all of his old catchphrases and enter himself in the Royal Rumble. And that's nice, but apparently he's going to be busy at Mania, so obviously not winning the Rumble, and that kind of makes it all a bit pointless. I don't know. We'll get into what happens with the Rumble stuff uh, when we get into the main event, but that kind of felt weird. Like, he just came out and hit his catchphrases, and was like, yeah, I'm Jericho, bye. Uh, so, I, I don't hate Jericho, but this kind of felt a bit pointless to me. Uh, anyway, we had the New Day versus the unlikely tag team of the Dudley Boys and Callisto. Because apparently they need a new Spike Dudley, and Sakara's hurt. So sure, why not? Dudley's and Callisto. That makes sense. Uh, but obviously, the New Day win the match. And that moves us on to our discussion on this match, which was the main event of the evening, Sheamus vs. Roman Reigns for the World Heavyweight title. Unfortunately, modern wrestling games do not let you have a custom uh, referee. And so, that therefore, I can't put Vince as the, the referee of this match, which is a damn shame. Uh, anyway, Vince was the referee of this match. Uh, and most significantly, Vince doesn't understand, or didn't understand that he wasn't, uh, they hadn't gone to commercial yet, and did one of these, which was one of these, and flipped off somebody in the front row, which was real funny, on the hard camera side. Uh... So, I, that, come on, Vince. 
But here, here's the thing with Vince, though. Like, as, as funny as that is, as, 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 as for anybody else would be in serious trouble, right? But this is Vince McMahon. What are you gonna do? Fire me? Yeah! Like, come on. Anyway, uh... That was, like... The match was kind of whatever. Um... Vince gets the... He, he does the usual heel referee stuff. He's like, oh, you know, I need some eye drops. I need, you know... My contact fell out. And then it's like, he was doing a fast count, and then a slow count. And then he just stopped counting. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, so he gets punched in the face. Uh, out comes Stephanie. She comes out and is, like, leaning... On the bottom rope, leaning over, and then and then uh, throws Vince into the ropes, and they both fall. And it, as a, the amount of screwy stuff here that 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 happened was was kind of insane. Uh, but here's where the botch comes in, right? So you do all this stuff. Vince is in the ring, had been punched, back on his feet. Uh, Reigns is gonna spear him. Obviously, he has to be on his feet to get speared. I don't. No one thought this through, right? In comes Sheamus, hits two bro kicks, goes to pin Reigns. You would think Vince, being the ref, would count it. Vince just kind of falls on his ass and is like, Ugh! because there was supposed to be another ref. And in comes Scott Armstrong, back on TV for the first time in fucking forever, because he's the authority corrupt official, to do the count. Uh, the count doesn't happen. Vince and Stephanie are like, Fucked it up. Fucked it up. Like, they're get, tr trying to get out of the ring. Armstrong takes a bump. Superman punch. A third ref comes in. And, and you know, I don't know if he gave him a spear or whatever. And Reigns, obviously Reigns had to retain here, right? But Vince, the way they booked this looked so fucking awkward. Like, Vince should not have been in the ring when you wanted to bring in your other referee, Scott Armstrong, to do a count and then not make the count. Like... The way that... It, maybe it was just bad camera work. But it's like, you can see Vince being there. Like, why isn't Vince counting? He's the ref. He should be able to count this, and then she Sheamus should win. It made no sense. They botched it so hard. Anyway. That was the end of that match. And then Reigns retains. And Vince is like, You know what? You know what? You're gonna defend at the Rumble. Yeah! And, uh... That means that he's gonna defend in the Rumble. Which, yeah, Vince, get in there. Uh, which instantly means that it makes the Rumble way more interesting with Roman Reigns defending his title in the Rumble. He's the first guy to defend, to be in the Rumble and defend his belt. In 92, it was a vacant title. And they, the winner of the Rumble was the new champion. This one, he's actually gonna be in it defending it, meaning that he could be screwed by anybody. By Vince, by Triple H, and honestly, I think it's... That was pretty nice. Honestly, I think he'll probably get screwed by Triple H, entering himself into the Rumble. Now, if they want to further up the ante in the coming weeks, obviously, you can say, okay, well, guess what, buddy? Now you're number one. And then, well, guess what, buddy? It's not 30 guys, it's going to be 40 guys. Like, there are ways to continually... They want Reigns to overcome these odds. Now, whether or not he's going to win the Rumble, well, I'll get into my predictions that, that, that weekend for that video. But until then, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll see how this thing builds. But it instantly makes this whole thing much more interesting. Because you could have Reigns win. You could have Cena win. You could have Lesnar win. The, the amount of guys that could be winners, it makes it so much less predictable. And that's all I'm asking for for one of my favorite events of the year. Anyway, that uh, was Monday Night Raw. I will have more thoughts on that stuff uh, in my 2K sh in, in, in my 2K l l Let's Play videos and whatever else. But until then, and until next time, uh, I will see you next time for more videos right here every day on this very channel. And I am out. Later.